I'm Forrest Saunders at the Capitol. Few are feeling that Election Day hangover worse than Florida Democrats. Tuesday night, the party lost races up and down the ballot as Republicans delivered blow after blow. With the Florida GOP getting super majorities in the state legislature, a clean sweep in the Florida cabinet, governor, he's red, white, blue. and that near 20 point re election margin for Governor Ron DeSantis, thank you for honoring us with a win for the ages. Some state Republicans now declaring Florida's swing status dead. Extremely low voter turnout by the Democrats. State Senator-elect and DeSantis surrogate Blaze Angolia attributed the GOP success to not just general apathy from Democrats, but gains with Hispanic voters in places like Miami-Dade and rejection of the Biden administration. This is a mandate that they like what we're doing here in the state of Florida. There is a reason why people are moving to this state in droves. Now comes the hard part, warns some political experts. The party has to deliver on Tuesday's promises. The Republicans appear to have achieved in Florida politics the sort of dominance that they've hoped for. And so the question will be, can they sustain this? Florida Democrats, meanwhile, pointing fingers Wednesday. The Progressive Caucus urged the resignation of party chairman Manny Diaz, calling his two-year tenure a vacuum in leadership. Diaz blaming drastically reduced national support this cycle in a Tuesday memo. I want to give a good congratulations to Governor DeSantis on his re-election. Others think the top of the ticket featured a weak candidate. It's always tempting to do the Monday morning quarterback thing. Incoming House Minority Leader Fentress Driscoll was trying to stay positive Wednesday. Though her caucus returns with even less power than it had before, she thinks there's still room to work with Republicans on big issues like property insurance and time to learn and improve. There's going to be a lot of, uh, I would say, like kind of like that postmortem analysis, trying to understand a better way forward. But from my perspective, when you're this far down, the only way that you can go is up. Other Democrats have echoed that sentiment, including Senate Minority Leader Lauren Book, also facing a GOP supermajority. She wrote on Twitter recently, it took years to get here, quote, and will now take years of uncomfortable hard work to rebuild what was lost. That's the latest out here at the Capitol. I'm Forrest Saunders reporting.